Welcome, everybody, to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette, and we're so glad that you're with us with this special program today to stay curious with Gene Wright. Gene, how are you? Fine. It's a pleasure to be back. Well, <laughs> welcome to our humble museum. We uh, are going to talk about Jean as being an influencer with her partner, Ken Kramer, here in a little bit, but she's here to promote a beautiful children's book. Hold it up there for us, Jean, called So Sister. Uh, yeah. with uh, your partner there, Elise Maddock. Maddock, mm -hmm. Elise mm -hmm. Maddock. This is a, a, a really a, a good for adults. I enjoyed reading it, a brief, your biography kind of here, but she became a, so, a seamstress for the space shuttle. And you might say seamstress for the space shuttle, where are those blankets at, you know? And Jean's going to tell us all about that. <laughs> no, what they there. say is, you built the spacesuits. <laughs> yeah, you built the spacesuits space out of it or whatever. Yeah. But this is an award-winning uh, uh, book now and beautiful. Uh, Elise is quite an artist she and is. it is beautifully illustrated. And we're all proud that you're doing so well on it and Thank been you. around the country a little bit with us. So yes. wanted to uh, welcome Jean here. Going to let her do most of the talking. We've got... Uh, Marty Winkle, our co-producer here. Co uh, Marty, great to see you today. You've known Jean a long time, and Jean's helped us get uh, up to the next level. Her and Ken were very early on our, pro our Stay Curious programs here. So uh, we've got a y another young lady coming in here who I don't know. Welcome to Stay Curious. Oh, yeah. She's a local quilter. She's a local quilter. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, she's a local quilter, and she's I love shit. quilting. And, yes. And I think quilting as a photographer inspires me as a photographer. It's really uh, creative, and there's so much thought that goes into it, let alone the sewing part of it that drives you nuts. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, most quilters have a tremendous stash of material somewhere, don't they? Uh, yes. Fabric. Well, fabric. Yes. Not fabric. Fa <laughs> fabric. Okay. Ken's mother's passed in May, and just yesterday, I met informally with her quilt guild yesterday at Burger, Bob, Burger Rob's, and um, I had probably seven or eight bags of fabric, garbage bags full of fabric, and hmm. she's just one of the recipients. We've donated a bunch of her mother. His well, we're glad fabric. to have you here. Marty, we're going to do a little uh, uh, publicity here for things coming up there. There's Jean. There's uh, one of the awards that's come in for you, Outstanding Science Trade Book, and so happy about that. If you got a question for Jean about her role in the space shuttle, she'll be happy to answer questions. We hope to have her back in future Stay Curious is to yeah. maybe just do that. We found that our, our regular guests really enjoy just asking questions, you space workers. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mike Chachi Cianelli is going to be in the house on March 20th. We're excited for this director of the, this is quite an acronym, it is. Apollo Challenger Columbia Lessons, Lessons Learned Learn. Program. But it is so important mm -hmm. to what we're doing moving forward to not remember, I mean, to not forget the past in there. And uh, you know, Mike, he said, give you a big hug. There you are. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit about how our Stay Curious fans are going to enjoy Chachi. Oh, gosh, Michael's been with the program for a long time, and, and it really impacts him. He he loves the exhibit. He's been key in keeping the memory of the astronauts alive. It was uh, Michael Leinbach's idea, though. We buried Challenger in the missile silo, and both Michael and Michael didn't want uh, Columbia to have the same fate. So she's still teaching now. Universities can check pieces of her to do what uh, aerodynamic and heating on reentry will do. Mm -hmm. So anybody can check out pieces of her, but uh, it's a, it's really close to Michael's heart and, and Michael's couldn't be more perfect to be the one yeah. that, uh, that, that runs the program. What I'm excited to talk to Michael about is he's the architect of the Remembrance Memorial there at, uh, right to the beside the beautiful Atlantis up there that I've forever always remembered. moved forever to tears remembered. almost to yeah. see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, forever remembered there. So a, we're going to feature that with him. Marty, you got a question coming in already for Gene. Okay. Yeah, I have a question from Steve J. Which of the thermal protection blankets locations were needed to be repaired or replaced most often? Oh, the blankets. That's a good question. The one... Well, oh, okay. I'm going to bring the 3D um, Initially, one, but... I, I, here we go. Yeah. Initially, I would have to say in the ohms area, because believe it or not, for the first 10 shuttle flights, we didn't coat it with the ceramic nine coating. So the older ladies were telling me that when the wind would come up over the top, the blankets would have their thread break, the batting would work their way out, and they said they looked like blown out pampers. I would have to say in there, but for the most part, believe it or not, 
that was the beauty of the blankets. We not only saved 7,000 pounds when we switched by, uh, to blankets after, the t after we took the tile off, but what's amazing, again, bringing the ohms into effect again, if I can get it so it doesn't glare, um, it was really hard for us to do tile in that area. We used to call, we do a, did a dice cut where it was a tic-tac-toe design that we would cut underneath the tile to get the curvature that we needed. Once we switched to these blankets, naturally we could bend it. And I've got a little sample here. You can hold that for a second. Sure. Th this right here, you can see this is, it flexes. It really flexes. Now in this area, this is a four. In the ohms area, the blanket would be much thicker. It would be at least two inches thick. That's what be what we would call a class 11. The reason why the blankets there are thick, people think it's because of the proximity to the shuttle engine, but we're talking the middle area of the wing in this area here, the heat, excessive heat will wick against the ohms. And because it's a graphite epoxy base that the ohms pot is built out of, NASA requires us to have thick blankets there because the skin can't get hotter than 350 degrees in that area. So those blankets are that thick in there. So yes, I would have to say the yeah. ohms initially, but believe it or not, what was wonderful about those is if you look closely at Atlantis, because that's the closest orbiter that we have, we have patches all over her because we leave the blankets on. Unless they get a really bad tear, we just patch it like you would do your blue jeans and just sew it right on there and put some more ceramic coating and the and the blankets are good to go. <laughs> and if you're lucky enough to catch Jean out there, though they don't have the doses like they Anymore, used to, no, but I they used to have a red talk. ring out there on there. So uh, hold your questions for a minute. Let me okay, please get through our publicity here. here. Show the blankets. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, uh, let's go. get through a little bit of our promotional stuff here, okay. Marty, as we we want to make people aware of what we're celebrating, Ozzy Osband the godfather of the 321 area code in our area here on March 21st, 321 at uh, uh, Space View Park at 321 that's gonna start and we're gonna have a food, three food trucks, a rock and roll band till nine o'clock. It's gonna uh, be a downtown celebration of this wonderful man's life who was the rocket hobo. There's my yeah. rocket hobo patch there. There's Ozzy right there. We uh, miss him. We miss and, him. And uh, well, we sure do miss him with his green shirt there. And, and the uh, hair. <laughs> and uh, want to make sure, want to make sure, Gene and Ken, that you guys leave with a rocket hobo oh, patch thank you. here. So, thank you. Uh, but uh, quite a character. One of these guys that you know, you're going to uh, uh, remember. I always say when you go to, if you're from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, coming to your first launch. It's your, probably your only launch. Mm -hmm. You're going to remember the launch, and then you're going to remember this guy with a shock of white hair That's exactly. uh, that gave the, the countdown. And uh, he might have missed it. Uh, you know, it might have gone off at five or gone off uh, after zero, but he was a lot of fun to be there. When people would ask about where to go, I said, you know what? You really ought to go to Space View Park because he's our, he's our local flavor. I said, and they say, what does he look like? I go, well, kind of like Einstein. I said he has white <laughs> yeah, hair. And yeah. everybody said, perfect description. Yeah, I had no is. problem finding that him. Is. We're going to have a lot of fun with Ozzy. Also want to promote that we're going to have uh, coming up here. Uh, yeah, Ken's got something going on yeah, there. Very, yes. very important related to Ozzy. Uh -huh. You know, right now, CRS-30 cargo mission is set to launch that day at about 420, right in the middle of your celebration. So Thank you. It would be great to watch it yep. from Space yeah, Park. Thanks for reminding me that, okay. Ken, for sure. that's a, Yes, we did notice that yesterday. Oh, now, we being the National Space Society is really uh, on board with this and have taken it by the hand, bull by the horns. Don't know if you've met... Uh, uh, Burke? Gabriel Rothblatt. I know uh, he's yes. the executive director now of the mm -hmm. local chapter, mm -hmm. and Jennifer Muntz is running the office. Bert and then you the know office. Bert Dick of yes. the, uh, from the Ad Astra magazine campaign. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there's a rocket launch uh, going to happen. Just it, it's just, it's just, just amazing. Him. So, mm -hmm. we hope that happens. I miss him. Uh, what a what a, a eclectic man that had an impact. Even our museums of Brevard, mm -hmm. uh, the library misses him. Uh, just uh, uh, died at age 72 in natural causes. Mm -hmm. And we'll miss him at Shuttle Fest 3 that we're going to put on our, our third event to celebrate the space worker. And we, uh, it's more than just astronomy missions, going to talk about Astro 1 and 2, Ulysses and Galileo all had very interesting behind the scenes drama mm -hmm. that happened. Uh, and uh, like not many astronauts wanted to fly with a liquid fueled second stage in the payload bay, okay, <laughs> oh, no. that the Centaur was. And 
Uh, so Shuttle Fest 3, uh, thank you, Tim Gagnon, for the beautiful shuttle uh -huh. shield that we've branded our program around. Hyatt Place is the location. Ken Havocott is a big sponsor with the National Space Society and Bid Again Auctions. And we're going to ha be happily have J.D. Bartow there, John David Bartow, yes. when he bumped in our museum here about a year and a half ago. Uh, he is uh, uh, very tight with some of the space workers out there, like Mikey Haddad, mm -hmm. uh, Scott Bongan, yeah. uh, all level four guys out there. So thank you, JD, for for uh, coming to Shuttle Fest. We know that as Shuttle Fest go along, that uh, we feel astronauts will feel left out if they're not there. <laughs> yes. And you were helped us at the first Shuttle with Fest, Perry. and yeah, uh, I think Perry. I got a picture of that here. Wanted to, to just mention how Gene and uh, uh, Ken uh, Kramer there with a K um, have been f fabulous influencers on in, in all media on this, not the Space Coast, but around the country and the world. Uh, it's interesting how social media does bring you some international friends on there. But, yes, and that's but we thank you for what you do for uh, the social media groups and particularly the American Space Museum thanks you because I know you're anytime you mention the American Space Museum or stay curious, we are very grateful for that. Thank you. Thank so, you. And it's I a, love that picture place. I took of you guys. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. yeah talk, talking about that, we, we drove back and forth between yeah. Ocala. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. And, and a fan, fan saw us and ran up to us to say hello. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah that and makes you wonder. Well, we have another Gene would be on Stay Curious. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, this week, today. Yeah. Well, that's that's, that's fabulous. You guys do a great job. job. We know that uh, we love Emily Carney, number one space hipster. I think I was a space hipster at about 4,200. Uh, members there, and, they're, and they, they're I may like, have been 3,000. Yeah, they got Something like, like 50,000 yeah. on there. Our Facebook's not too bad with 12,000, but we don't want to be the biggest. That's we want good. we want to put content that relates to space workers on there because that's what our museum's all about. Uh, let's see if I got any more publicity here. No, I don't. Oh, I Marty? have something. I have something oh, sure. real quick. Uh -huh. I want to say happy birthday to SpaceX today, their 22nd birthday, and they had a successful Starship launch really? today. They did. And uh, my friend, uh, one of my managers at my TPS building now works for Star, uh, excuse me, SpaceX as of a couple of years, and they have hex tiles on board, and, uh, and they snap them on with bayonet clips, and the tile do really well. They have a blue RTV. Um, and it's called Blue Star RTV that they make. RTV. And, and RTV, that, room temperature vulcanization. Right, it's the glue that go. we used on shuttle. Only that was red. It's blue on Star Starship. And the bakery, they call it the bakery where they build the tile at, is where the old NSLD is. Um, across from Zorillas is where they build the tile at, huh. the Starship. Yeah, so. well, and we, we congratulate Starship, their third yes. flight. Boy, it really push the envelope again. It really did. I say the Department of Defense is looking mightily pleased at seeing that big booster work. And I'm thinking NASA anomaly is too. There. NASA is too. <laughs> yes. uh, and my God, I just told to somebody uh, after we were watching, I said, we're just one step to seeing that bad boy launch just nine miles from where we're sitting here. A lot of our photography friends are there yeah. right now. Yeah. Yes. I haven't seen two. I'll be I'll be uh, looking up some of those photographers and we'll be sharing some of that. Oh, John Krause as, has some beautiful ones. Yes, we had a, a busy day. Mike Killian, I say, is probably there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, another good friend. Scott so, Schilke. Uh, let's get to a question. Then we're going to talk right. more about the book, The So Sister, and just see what that was all about. Take you behind the scenes of the thermal protection sewing room. Okay. Marty, go ahead. I have a comment from Kaplan Sewing Machine. Hi, Gene. My company, S. Kaplan Sewing Machine, they worked, maintained our machines. worked on Lurch, Lurch, I guess it is, and many of the specialized sewing machines you used at the Thermal Protection Facility. Enjoyed your book. Wishing you much success. Oh, thank you. I remember when you guys used to come in, I think it was either once or twice a year, and do the major tune-ups on our, our machines. So, yeah, and I think your company's based in New York, if I remember right. It's been a long time. Wow. Yeah. Well, at least <laughs> I 11 remember. years. I remember. Just a mention our green screen here shows a beautiful peninsula night shot of Florida. We're right there. Okay. You see the little area pointing out there. The bump is the uh, Cape Canaveral. And, uh, uh, boy, that's uh, another good sight. I like going out to the beach and seeing the, uh, the I mean, just the, the Pad 36 for Blue Origin is just so gigantic. It is. The, 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 the lighthouse just looks like a little little toy out there next and to And unfortunately, it. whenever there's a launch and you see the pad lit up, 
people put their cameras towards there, the wrong path. Yeah, right. Think yeah, that's out there. But, but it's but not We're going to see a launch there. It's they just pulled back one of the fit check models out there. So. Yeah, they did. Uh, Carl, well, let's got look some at nice it. pictures. Yeah, we they did out there. So Work let's look at the book. All right. Well, let's talk a little bit about the book uh, here. So, sister, we're not going to reveal all that's in oh, there, I but that. but uh, I personally was moved by your inter, kind of your early years. Uh, you admit weren't the happiest of any childhood. No, and, my parents. Uh, that's that's some bravery to admit that. I think. Well, thank Cause you. Because everybody wants to think like, oh, I grew my perfect childhood. Not me. We put the no put my, dysfunction in uh, dysfunction. My, well, I won't go into gr <laughs> great great detail. My parents really didn't show a lot of affection towards each other. Um, and uh, my dad even, I hate to even say this, admitted a month after they were married, they probably shouldn't have gotten married. Uh -huh. And they were married 25 years. It was just as hard not seeing affection because yeah. we would say, uh, but you had an affectionate kiss. partner I all did. your life, your I sister, did. your twin sister. Yeah, my twin sister's my pal. I hope she's watching today. If not, she'll see it on YouTube. That's right. Uh, but um, about the book, how it started, believe it or not, it, um, when I was doing docent work at Atlantis, Elise Maddock came up to me and said um, that she was amazed at the amount of sewing. She had no idea. Her husband was the one who actually pointed out the blankets. And so she came up to me and said that she was a writer and an, an illustrator and said that she had always started many projects but never really finished. But she said, darn it, this is the project. I've got to set my mind and I'm going to get it done. And she said to me, I want the world to know. I want she likened it like some people have that it's a hidden figure story and she said she wanted the story told so i met her at atlantis over five years ago and when they say it takes five years for a book to come out i thought wow that's a long time but it's true it was roughly five years from mm -hmm. the time i met her to the time it was in april of 22 we found out that tilbury house wanted to do the book and then of course it released in october of last year but I met Elise there at Atlantis exhibit, so it was just meant to be. That's interesting. The yeah, title, well, So is... Sister, because that's what we were called, the So Sisters that worked on the shuttle. Well, it's uh, uh, available on Amazon and all the usual places. Is it in uh, Barnes & Noble or uh, they will order Books it. A Million? But I... Ken and I have a bunch that if anybody wants them, um, we'll autograph them. And Elise has autographed a bunch. And they're available at the Visitor Complex because we had a book signing yes, there in November. There. So yes, they're everywhere. I got a picture. Everywhere. In fact, let's go here. Uh, uh, I, uh, there's a. Oh, there's a. Yeah, lease. Boy, I did, uh, didn't use a whole lot of pictures. And thank again, Ken, for sending us a bunch. But we, we, you know, we just kind of want to feature you on this thing here. Uh, there's Elise. I did meet her at the book signing. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a, a mother of how many children? Six, and she oh, just wow. had her last one in August. And when I asked her, was that the last one? She just smiled, and I went, "Oh, I even." <laughs> so her husband's got a good job. Apparently, <laughs> he's a lawyer. <laughs> okay, a lawyer. all right, good. And they live right outside D.C. But I said to her, "I'm really surprised you had the time to do the book <laughs> and do the illustrations." Well, those of you who don't know, oh, yeah. what's what's behind them there? Yes. What's behind? Oh, what's you there? behind there? We that's... can assume that everybody knows. Oh, that's what we're true. That's at. the space shuttle atlantis and and uh, she's got the canada arm that you see between elise and i and the whitish that they look like yellow the white blankets there are uh, payload bay blankets and we met ladies made those there's believe it or not 2200 of those and underneath that is about 5500 silver let me grab one mm -hmm. poly image blankets here give me that shuttle. here we go there we go. Okay. There we go. There you go and and the reason why i show this one is because that was the first blanket i ever made the the silver polyimid is starting to wear off but they let me keep they they wanted to show us let them know what we could sew and we have tabs and we have openings and slits and everything but that was the first blanket and they let me keep it and i see like capton foil or or well, lard, it's poly or... and what you see is the id this right there the gold tape right there we had many ways how we id'd our blankets okay um it's the id's right there oh there i right got there. you there okay. we go that's what I was the orange one to. and that's capton tape we actually had a strip of aluminum and we had a hard stone that we would take a metal letter set and hand hammer the letters and numbers for each of the id then we would take india ink swab yeah. it across the metal let it dry for about 30 seconds and then wipe the excess off and then we would cover it with the two Where, rows of uh mylar you tape you see the black numbers there right yeah right, right that's an old finger. part yeah. there this is a, now this is a specific uh place on the show where the, this is going because these... it's, it's shaped right that way well that's true we go these blankets are all underneath the white payload bay blankets you won't see these but the wonderful thing about this film is Mm -hmm. It has over 400,000 holes per meter, 
or roughly a yard to help the air escape from the once they get into space the blankets will collapse or compress I should say and this is the film that protects the astronauts from radiation so those are inside all the walls and in the bulkheads and it's over 5,500 relays made that you will not see them but they are there and they're probably some of the most hmm. important blankets we built that is very interesting, Jean. Great, great. Uh, we got uh, one to just, uh, though, though the book features you, of course, you do mm -hmm. give a lot of Shout credibility to, to your, uh, and a couple team. guys, which had two men. Oh, this right here, this is um, some of us TPS ladies, group. some of our, uh, some of us TPS ladies are in the front row. Some of those that you see are the guys that actually built the tile or did waterproofing of our parts. Some of our thermal protection system managers, uh, some of the people that did our logistics and paperwork. So that's just a small segment of our team. But a lot of us ladies for the uh, So Sisters are in the bottom right-hand corner there. Just to emphasize too. that, you know, no no one's ever singled out. Even the astronauts have heroes, and, yes. and, it's, and it's you people there. And we in our workers' gallery proudly show some of the team patches and put yes. the So Sister patch in there. Yes, thank you. Uh, That's nice. The only other patch that has the shape of the space shuttle <laughs> is, of course, 107, the, the last flight of Columbia. Mm -hmm. And uh, But this was very popular for the, the, the space launch system and the recovery teams and so forth to have their own little designs and patches and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, it, it made you, uh, uh, have, in my opinion, gave these workers pride in their craft. Well, Tim Gagnon designed it, and the symbolism behind it is, as you see the lady in the middle hand sewing, because we did a lot of hand sewing on shuttle parts, the five stars represents each of our space shuttles. And if I recall his, his uh, description, we have the five uh, uh, stars representing the astronauts. Their love is coming down to our hands, and consequently our love and our protection of our hands to protect them, is our love is coming up to them representing each of the five shuttles all right i'll buy that tim gagnon he's mm -hmm. always got these little easter egg uh meetings in there but yes yeah we're just one of our <laughs> galleries that we're very proud of uniquely showing off the space worker and some of the the things that uh those were everyday items to them marty you've got a question from one of our stay curious watchers a yeah, question from mark usiak hi mark gene what was the total weight of all the blankets on each orbiter oh you'd have to ask me that <laughs> um, each of the shuttles weighed anywhere between 175,000 and 2,000. <laughs> I would say, um, oh gosh, that's hard. Mm, I used to know the percentages too. Um, it's been a long time, Mark. I'm getting old. Well, if it um, comes to you. Yeah. I would say, you're asking pounds again? Oh gosh. I want to say 4,000 pounds mm -hmm. maybe? I don't know. We saved... What was wonderful about the blankets is if we took off um, twenty five about um, 7, about seven thousand tile and um, these blankets that we made uh, depending on the size we could fit the equivalent of ten to twenty five tile in one blanket saved us over seven thousand pounds for the last three shuttles almost a year and a half in construction time because we had that less of tile we had to build and like i said these blankets just glue right up there we just patch them tiles we could repair those too eventually our building came up with the tile repair system but um yeah it's just and again because the, i always say the shuttle's a curvy body it was easier for us to fit her with the fabric blankets mm -hmm. which is one of the if you've never seen a space shuttle up close you need to one of the first things that you you notice is it's not like a <clears throat> Uh, an airliner that's all no. metal and and shiny and everything like that. You go, what in the world? Those you know these blankets that that you showed there that cover the ohms pods in certain areas there to yeah. save weight that that actually look just like a quilt. It and, is. Uh, uh, it is a quilt. And then uh, this is a, so then you realize what what you're looking at is is you know, know, a mess. No. Uh, an an so, innovation of uh, of the space age. So this is. Let me see if you can. Okay, these are called a cell. It's an inch grid. The machine, it's four stitches per inch. We had a giant 30 needle sewing machine that would quilt the fabric and it would make a 30 by 30 inch piece of fabric quilted called a production unit. From there, we would look at our blueprint and draw whatever shape it needed to be. But this is quartz fabric, quartz thread, plain old fiberglass in the back, and it's sheets of quartz batting in the middle uh -huh. for that. And when you're a collector, you love seeing the 
the ink marks on it there. Oh, yes. That's, uh, that yes, shows that's it. It was a working piece of uh, uh -huh. material there. So, Gene, let's take it. We know we're going to have some other questions sure. here, but I want to set it up a little bit here with taking everyone behind the scenes of uh, the thermal protection uh, office yeah. you had there. There's that one piece that you well, showed like us it, when yeah. you were so grateful to do a show at our first shuttle fest. Uh, I just see a piece of Terry White's handlebar mustache oh, there yes, beside you, you there. I but uh, here's here's we're gonna take you inside here, take yeah. us inside. Okay, this is upstairs um, in our. Uh, we had a two-story facility at the thermal protection facility. Tiles were built downstairs, and the sewing area was upstairs. It looks mighty different now, but um, people always ask me what did it look like upstairs, and that's what it is. Some of our sewing machines and. And we have a table that Back table you see patterns are spread out there and those were parts because we had a lot of people that would come in and um, see what we could do because as the program was winding down we were trying to make ourselves valid to eventually for other programs so we do have some shuttle parts on there that we built um i also worked on the orion test parachutes oh, that was you? interesting um and aft skirt blankets for the for their solid rocket boosters um and uh well, that reminds me, I saw a NASA program the other day talking about the seamstresses on the Mars excursion rovers, Opportunity and, and Spirit, that were landed in these like 16 big bags of uh, uh, medicine balls, what they looked like, that were sewn. And, and they had the, uh, the ladies were featured on that. It's ILC I, I, Dover. They're known for yeah. their spacesuits, but they also were the ones that built those Mars bags. Yeah. And they have them on display there at the company. I've been there a couple that, of times. Yeah, I need to go. We've got an ILC oh, Dover guy there. that we you need to go, go there. there. But, but uh, th that was very fascinating because they had them ballooned up and they were checking, you know, their, their stitches and all that stuff. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, before I forget about it, um, uh, uh, Terry White was commenting about you all swapping. Some of your TPS people came over to help repair tiles and, and uh, uh, blankets. And he said that uh, you had to, they were big square needles and you had to use uh, vice grips to pull them through and you were right there doing it especially if they had been coated with the ceramic nine i have a sample here that i probably can't get to now but okay. ceramic coating really hardens the outside of the blanket we put a clear coat on and about eight hours later a white coat so that's another reason why people say they think the shuttle looks fake because it looks paper mache it's mm -hmm. because it it does look like paper mache it does kind anyway. of look like well, let's check it's right there it's very hard to go through especially after ceramic coating and occasionally if they got a little bit behind schedule across the street they would ask us to come over and install thermal barriers mm -hmm. which if you look at my facebook page that's what i'm doing at the very top of that page i'm installing thermal barriers those are all done by hand and they're inst and installed by hand too there's I can't impress upon everyone the amount of hand sewing yeah. we did on the well, show. No, he was saying that his, his, uh, <laughs> his crew, it was crimping their hands. Their hands were getting tired. Mm -hmm. And so he thought, huh, they're not used to this. Let me ask Jean if some of her people want to come over there. But take us behind the scenes here a little bit more, and then we'll get to those questions. Oh, no, see, this is the there. one I like to talk about. That's this Lurch, is Lurch, right? and That's Lurch. <laughs> Lurch, um, you can see... Yeah, in the bottom part lurch. of the in the bottom part of the uh, sewing machine, you see a little picture, and that's what Lurch originally looked like. His first job was sewing saddles. He could sew through two right inches. There. Yeah, right there. There, there right you there. go. Uh -huh. Right there. That's okay. what he originally looked like. Uh -huh. He was our oldest machine singer. Uh, uh, built saddles in like horse saddles. As horse saddles, he could sew. We say he, and that's the one thing yeah. is NASA has a tradition that we started with the Apollo astronauts. Those were singer sewing machines that built the spacesuits. They were named Big Mo and Sweet Sue, and that was the tradition that as seamstresses we kept, all of our sewing oh, machines had their own names. That's a so book that in was itself. Lurch. That was Lurch. All right. Uh, but anyway, you got somebody waving We in cut the a section of his arm out and extended him out. So he's the one that we quilt the engine blankets, the dome heat shield blankets, and also we do two rows of closeout stitches. And that's me sewing thermal barriers in. Those are a four day part for us to do. Uh, we stitch them in by hand. That's in the nose landing gear there. In the OPF, orbital process. Across, that's true. Um, it took two of us about 18 hours to stitch them in because the thread that we used, and I have a piece right here, it's called AB440. Mm -hmm. Can't get that at Joann's. No. Um, it's a bright <laughs> okay. pink thread. It melts at 3,250 degrees. And in 3, our 3,200, so I could, I could bake with this. Yes, a, you a could. turkey or whatever. And you would think that the higher temperature the thread, the stronger it would be. But if anything, the characteristics were almost opposite. 
we could stitch maybe an inch with that thread before it would get so thin I would have to knot it, bury my knot, and continue on, which is why it would take us so long. Those thermal mm. barriers are four feet long, and we have 12 of those that we would hand sew We've in. We've got one. And there they are. Those... That's what we're talking about right there, right? Well, actually, those are thrusters. Those oh, okay. are thrusters. Um, I don't see. Uh, well, actually, yeah. if I have my different okay, shapes that you can't you. believe look at the patterns they have there in the back there to to make sure that they're okay. they're, they're doing the pattern right this is a type of this is a type of uh of a uh, blanket that we would use inside the uh wheel well but that's that, that's a different one but it's it's along the same line now this it, this gives me it's got for a spring tube there, inside this has got the the feel of a wick in a a lamp type of feel. I'm not saying it is that. Oh but, no, it's got it's, got, it's got that tube kind inside. of you know, everyone's got a kerosene lamp. They uh -huh. they've well, that's because you got it's, cotton. It's got batting and, in there and it's got yeah. a spring tube that run the length of it. But you can squeeze it. And whenever yeah. we have access doors, sometimes you can squeeze compress the blanket down and it locks oh, it back so in place. That'd be place. for a door. It would be any access. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and again this thread, that? the high temperature thread would be used People think the bottom of the shuttle is the hottest, but it's not. We actually have a curved panel here. Let me pull our shuttle back out again. Mm -hmm. We've got a curved panel here, right here underneath the nose. Um, and we call that the shuttle smile. You can't see because I know it's glary. But anyway, uh, okay. we actually had a, a right smile-shaped blanket that we sewed by hand. And that area underneath her nose is the actual hottest area on reentry. We built a special blanket in there. We made a giant bowl-shaped blanket inside the nose and filled it up with hundreds of puzzle blankets because they fit like puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. All of that's done by hand, sewn with the high-temperature thread. Because, again, right underneath her nose is the hottest. The second is right where Mark has his finger. That's the mm -hmm. second hottest area in there to where we hand-sewed what they called horse collars, four-foot-long pieces of fabric. Uh, that we wrapped around a support structure, and they would be pulled down into place where the leading edge of the wing went. Mm. So again, a lot of hand sewing, but I have to bring back Lurch. He not only quilted our blankets behind the engines, um, and I have some dome There's each of like the big, yeah, the, the big engines, the big rings for people who see the blankets around the engines. Right. Um, those are four and a half days. We have two on each one. When we get done with those blankets, people are amazed when I tell them we physically hand those, hand sew those to the back of the shuttle with an ink and null wire thread. Wow. Uh, we're, I, that's probably I. I love talking about her rear end most because it's very fascinating. Yeah, I like there. looking at that. I should have thrown a picture into that, but uh, and also back just... there is um, in, in Endeavor on STS forty nine was the first one to have a parachute. Right. We also built the blanket that covered the parachute, and that blanket door had to be replaced every time. And you guys have one on display. We have here a door here. We do scuffed we up from yeah, run, uh, from being down ejected the down the runway. We have pyrotechs or explosives that blow it off the door. So so of all the blankets on Atlantis, that's the only new one on her because we had to build a new one because, again, it cascaded down the runway mm -hmm. after we used it. All right. Well, that's what we got behind there. We'll, we'll take some questions some now, Marty, in there. Uh, uh, any more? Take some uh, If you got any more questions. Yeah, we have a question from Dave Stangy. Hi, Dave. Which, welcome to Michigan. Which, welcome yeah, from Michigan. He'll be at Shuttle Fest <laughs> and with his wife. He's, he's now... Uh, retired but also gary gerald had a birthday yesterday marty happy birthday to you gary and we tease him about he's a vidalia onion farmer and boy I they were good those. last year they're sweet he brought us a whole case of them last year i so. used to live in georgia they're a good yeah, one they're, they're he's in collins one. georgia okay where he's at so anyway happy birthday to you gary gerald what's dave stangy our diamond fan question there well before i give you his question i believe this is one of our best questions ever Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> setting the bar okay. way high there. Gene, did you ever put your name on the back of any of the quilts that you sewed so that her, I'm sorry, so that her name was launched on the shuttle? No, but you know, that's funny. You and my twin sister Joan think alike because she used to ask me that all the time. My number was 3281. So my number is stamped everywhere on my paperwork so they could tell if I built it or not. But my friend Kathy and I built a lot of the dome heat shield blankets around the engines. So I always say to my sister and anybody else, whenever she launched and you looked at her rear end, Kathy and I made those blankets and those were the biggest blankets we built on the shuttle. So that I didn't have my physically my name, 
but I could tell they were mine because they were so big. So no, I didn't do that, but that's a good question. Yeah, no Kilroy but was I have, here, huh? But yeah. I have to say, though, and for people who sew, this, mean, this meant a lot to me. Since I am a quilter, I always like preciseness in my work. And it was so nice as if I could build a part, I'd be on first shift, second shift quality would look at my part and say to me, without even looking at the, the stamp number, we know this is one of Jean's parts because she has the most beautiful, precise corners. And when you hear that, you're thinking people uh -huh. who sew, oh, well. But but for me as a quilter, it was just nice that they could just look at my work until I did it. And that was a compliment uh, to me. I always took that pride as a in compliment. your craft. That's something yeah. I think might have escaped some of the people in the 21st century. Jean, you brought up something there as answering Dave's uh, question there that y'all might wonder about. I do. You were assigned a number in a stamp. Mm -hmm. And uh, talking to Marty and other space workers, never imagined that this was a crucial part of your, of the paper trace of your work. Explain that to, you, you got a, a, a an employee number or was it a... We had an employee uh, number, but this was our physical part number. Okay. And so when I bought it, I actually, my very now first... You keep going like that. You had oh, a, little stamp, a little stamp, which we, we had one of those in the case I should have photographed. So that. my very first part that I bought, we called it buying... Uh, was a liner that went underneath the uh, dome heat show blanket. It almost feels like a naga hide. That was the first one. Literally, when you're stamping the paperwork for the first time, it's just awe because you're thinking, they, I built this part. The astronaut's safety depends on me. And it's, it's just an awe because you know you're so responsible once that number is stamped on there. But I have a funny story to tell. I had a co-worker of mine who, unfortunately, Bonnie has died since died. She was my, my fellow so sisters. People always talk about funny stories. Bonnie always put her makeup on at work at her workstation, and she technically wasn't allowed to put it. We weren't allowed to do that, really. Um, Bonnie and, and I'm Bonnie was African American, and I I say that because I have to tell the story. She used to put this brownish gold foundation on her face, and it was beautiful on her face. But one time when she was building a horse collar which is one of the blankets in the wing, she got a smear of it on her blanket. And Quality went by there and said, Bonnie, you know, um, you, number one, you're not supposed to wear makeup. And then they said, she said, I'm not worried about it. When it gets heat cleaned, it'll come out. Well, we heat clean a part. It depends on what it is. We'll bake them for four hours at 650 degrees or 850 degrees for two hours. So uh, horse collars would probably would get that. So anyway, the next morning, they said to Bonnie, well, we had to scrap your part. And she said, why? And she said, they, were tell, they told her uh, the uh, foundation that you had on your face didn't come out of your part. And she says, I don't believe that. And I laughed and I said to Bonnie, what the heck are you putting on your face that even 850 degrees is not baking <laughs> out of the fabric? <laughs> oh, I miss Bonnie. She was a sweet lady. Oh, bless her heart. Uh, of course, we all, you know, that's a blessings that some of us have living a little longer we we miss a lot of friends but so this baking of these parts and so forth now is this like a zarella's type of pizza fired it bakery is. or it is really it more like is. your oven baker at home you know i i should have pulled it out i didn't think i'd ask i didn't think i'd ask but i do have a picture it's blue and it's got six racks in it and um pertaining to our blankets whenever we're building an outside blanket um it goes across the street to be pre-fitted and then once it prefits and we know it's going to fit, then it comes back across the street to our building and then it goes downstairs to be baked. So it will be baked, not mm. only because it's got sizing that stiffens the fabric that we don't want on there, and also because we don't necessarily have to use gloves when we build it because we know we're going to put it in the oven. But the reason why we bake it, not only to build out the impurities, but once we glue that blanket on, when we do those two coats of coating, the clear coat and the, and the, uh, the, the uh, white coating, the fabric has to be very, very porous for us. So that's why we heat clean them, to clean them and also to make them ready to accept that ceramic paint when we put them on there. Such a process, folks. Who'd have thunk it type of thing? And, and you know, you hate to say one part of the shuttle is more important to the safety of the astronauts than the other, but, boy, this is the re-entry blankets and tiles certainly are up there on, on something well, that has to work. Here's something. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. These are some of my, these are some of our, prints that we work with um we had to know all sorts of things i've got prints here and prints here okay. um we had all sorts of prints that we worked to 
Um, we had to almost think in 3D. I want to look at this. Um, very much like just patterns of you dressmakers out there. It is. Or whatever, or, or uh, people that love... Uh, and, where, and, and actually where the ID tag would go and what fastener we would use. I don't know hmm. if you can see this. But anyway, a lot of our prints were detailed. I, I, used that, and, uh, I did. I used that when I was working, uh, and I had my little notes in yeah. there. It's also got our parts list as to what fabrics oh, yeah. we use, what threads that we use, what fasteners that we would use. So, yes, that's all shuttle era. I was able to keep all my stuff. Well, I turned my uh, fundraising auction hat on here. Uh, don't let these get away because this is uh, Chuck Jeffrey would love to uh, help you out there. Of course, when you, when, you know, someday down the line there. But no, seriously, we we love it. You, you, that, that's one of a kind. That's a one of a kind artifact of the space age, without yes. a doubt. Uh, I mean, really. And you might and be the only one that has saved the show. I just show the front of that too. Yes. Uh, we have two this, of them. If we I actually... found this in a box, you know, of stuff. Of someone's and so forth, and and you know, I would say this is a several hundred dollar. This uh, drawing item. class, we had three different manufacturers: McDonnell, Douglas, and Boeing, and each one of them did blueprints. And we actually had to build our own patterns to build our parts. So once a year, we would go to classes to look at their symbols and what they use, how to mark our our patterns to where the ID would go, where the tufting would go, mm -hmm. and this one. This yes, one, yes, yes. anybody who goes to Atlantis, when you look inside the payload bay doors where uh -huh. they open on the very edge, this is where that blanket would go. And um, the reason why I brought it is what's unique is you notice how in the center of it, it's got a hole in there. And that's how I can tell if anybody is a collector. If you see this blanket, again, it lines the very inside of the payload bay doors. It has a little aluminum vent that goes there. Oh, when okay. we built the shuttle parts for shuttle, that was the only part that we recycled so you can tell it's an authentically flown blanket because we would take that little one by inch by one inch uh screen out of there and use it when we built a new blanket so six nine ninety eight yes so you've got part numbers and stuff on the back there uh -huh. uh, that's quite a nice little thing there too yeah uh so uh Awesome. We're gonna we're gonna we're 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 enjoying this conversation with Jean Wright. Talked oh, about right. her that's book. Right. We're talking about the uh, the shuttle's blankets oh, on there, okay. and well, yeah, uh, that, that's a good idea. That blanket would go literally right mm -hmm. here. That blanket goes right on the leading edge of the wing. I know that's right. hard to see. Right, right, right in there. there. Yeah, right that, that there. Where this that, one yeah. would go. That's, that's where, where this one would go. This goes right beside her there in the right bottom. Right in there. So. And yeah. like I said, it's authentic because we yeah. know that we recycled the screen whenever we built a new one. So if you come across this blanket and you see the screen out of it, you know it's flown. You know it's flown. <laughs> um, any questions about the shuttle, Marty? There, okay. Well, uh, you know, we're gonna have we've had Gene on before, and we'll, have, we'll certainly have you on again. Maybe something specific about about it. Just talk about the the back end of the engines one time mm -hmm. would be fun. But we wanted to move to a little. Uh, different part of uh, of your life. Uh, oh, one, uh, 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 yeah, we're gonna do we're okay. gonna do that next. Here is is you. This is a photograph of quite an honor that you had. Explain it to us there. Ah, you know that's the one thing I love about the space community. We get in touch and we get to meet astronauts and famous people just in our just with different functions. Part of the job. <laughs> it is. I, I I met Rick and Mark Armstrong of, at a function probably back in, oh gosh, let's see, the 50th anniversary was in 2019. So probably in 2017, 2018, I met them. And um, I got a phone call from Mark one day, and he said, we have the 50th anniversary of our father walking on the moon, and there's a special project that we want you to work on. And he goes, but you're going to get a call from CAG. It's an auction house uh, that's in Southern Florida. And he goes, he's got a project he wants you to work on. Long story short, it turns out the Armstrong family was having a 50th anniversary of their father's moonwalk. And also when the movie First Man came out, they wanted a way to promote it. So he called me and said, we want you to cut the fabric that our father took to the moon. And he has it, um, I, you know, he, it went on the lunar module and it's from the 1903 Wright Flyer. So they, I went to Sarasota and I saw the fabric laid out on the table tears came to my eyes because i couldn't believe it went to the moon it's from the 1903 wright flyer you can see what the age has done to that the wright flyer uh they took the fabric off the 
part of the plane and stuck it in a storage shed in Day Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. So for, uh, till the great flood in Dayton, that fabric got exposed to coal dust and, and rust and metal and just mold. And so some of the fabric I cut was so fragile, it literally was crumbling in my hand. But I ended up cutting up over 200 pieces of that. And as I was cutting them, that many? they were, oh, oh yeah. Well, they were initially supposed to be an inch and a quarter a piece. And then in the really rough areas, three quarter by three quarter, those went for about 75,000 a piece. I think it was 125,000 to 150,000 for the bigger pieces. Then they had me save two roughly five by five pieces I don't think those have sold, but um, as soon as I cut it, I had a schematic I was working to. Craig was sticking them in those little little containers, and you can see it says uh, Armstrong Family Auction, and then it has a little right flyer thing. So, uh, and, and if anybody asks, no, I didn't get any, but oh. but when he when Craig stuck it in a plastic case, and some of the threads were sticking out of the side, he says you can take your glove off. And you can tickle those threads and say you touched it. So, <laughs> so eventually I was called back to cut another batch for them two years after that. And they were a little more lax then. And I was able to actually pick up some pieces with my bare fingers. That's sweet. So uh, that was nice. It was, do you know if that was on the lunar module, number five, or in the orbiter? Oh, are you talking about when we had the Mars rover? Cause no, there was no a... I'm talking about the, 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 this fabric oh. that's flown to the moon. Oh, oh, gosh, I know they had a number of yardages yeah, of it. It was on the lunar surface. surface. He yeah, had it in his PPK, be. his personal yeah. preference okay. kit, how they're allowed five pounds of gear. Right. So he had it in there. Yeah. He had it what, in there. Quite an honor that was it for was. you there. And, uh, you know, you don't take it for granted that uh, uh, it's an honor to sit in an orbiter because uh, oh. no, you can't do that anymore. Oh those fashionable outfits yeah. we, we had big old big old white boots that we wear wore underneath our knee we used to say we look like stay puff, puff marshmallows but we had a tradition and i don't know if marty remembers this maybe it's just a girl thing but we had this giant rug i would say it's about three by four of white tape that right before you egressed into ingress into the sh a shuttle you had to get uh, get your boots and literally what we call the happy dance and we would dance on the tape to get all the dirt and debris off our boots before we actually worked inside of her huh. so we used to call it our happy dance i don't know i doubt that it was right before you went in the white room i don't know if the guys called it but we ladies called it our happy dance because we were excited to know we would be able to go in this one at first i couldn't tell what orbiter i was in until i looked at the flight flight book and that's discovery that's what was taken that picture was taken when i was in discovery ov103 yes you can see and, that in the, uh, orange the most book flown right at 39 uh, missions there that's right. so uh, uh, what were you doing in there work-wise well um, we were working on struts inside the payload bay um, uh -huh. you don't see those it can those are covered too sometimes when we get in the payload bay they're stripped to almost nothing and we're, we're building new blankets from the ground up so anyway as a as a nicety Normally, I would not be working in that area. I was mainly back after mid on, on the shuttle. And okay, most of the time, eh, about half and half, forward too. But I was working inside the payload bay, working on struts. And they let me come in and have my picture taken there in my little full suit. <laughs> All right. Well, we were going to talk about one mission that was in the book, yes. STS-117. I consult my scroll here. Yes. 117 was... Uh, um, I have August, uh, June, June 8th of 2007, yeah. June 8th of 2007, launched from pad 39A. It initially was supposed to launch, uh, I think, in February, but this is a funny story. I left for work. We Our hours were 7 o'clock in the morning to 3.30 in the afternoon. That afternoon, they predicted hail. They weren't sure exactly when. I left at my work normal work time at 3.30. Half an hour later, after I left from work, there was a major, major hailstorm out there that a lot of my coworkers had golf ball sized hail, literally put divots all over their car. Uh, it also caused over 2,000 divots in our external tank on 117 and had to bring her back. But how we enter into it with our thermal protection is uh, when they were doing the rendezvous, rendezvous maneuver, pitch maneuver, where the shuttle does its 360 degree backwards turn and they would use the Canada arm to check the tiles and the blankets. Well, they found that on the Ohms pod at the very top where we call it the blanket tile interface, where the tiles and the blankets meet 
at the very top of the ohms pod, we noticed that there was a class 11 two inch thick blanket. It peeled back about six inches and they were worried about it since again, you've got that heat from the wing working over the top of the ohms. They didn't know if that would cause any damage. Now, believe it or not, in that area, we're only gonna see a 700, 1000 degrees, which is in thermal world, not, not bad, not bad. They were concerned that if we came home uh, and, and the wind would catch it and pull that blanket off. And, and again, the skin of the ohms is a graphite epoxy and we can't get that skin hotter than 350 degrees or that'll start kind of degrading itself. Mm -hmm. So we're watching NASA TV. And uh, before that, NASA had us, literally we had 24 hours. We had to get tiles from our building and blankets and replicate four sections of that area on the shuttle. Houston gave us 24 hours to do that. We had to fire up our multi-needle machine because we hadn't made class 11 blankets in probably six months. Had to build new blankets and had tile and, and the blankets, it's in the book. And anyway, we had to ship those overnight so that Houston could do art jet te art, arc jet testing and wind tunnel testing to see if we could not get that blanket down would it peel off and if, would it still be safe? So that was what, why it made it to the book because they wanted something interesting. And that was the first time we had 24 hours to replicate a section of the shuttle, hmm. have it shipped overnight. And they did all their testing and then they shipped it back and said, yes, we think it'll be fine. But D Danny Olivas was our astronaut on EVA three, came out and had um, a little suture kit and we're laughing because he has a little suture kit and the blankets are two inches thick and we're wondering how he's gonna fix it. And so in my book, there's a picture that Elise drew that you can see him at the top, at the end of the Canada arm. And you can see that it's a drawing that she did from a NASA photo that he's up there. He ended up using staples, but we're laughing at him as he's watching because he pulls out this little suture kit. And we're thinking, oh, he's trying to fix a two inch thick blanket. So what he did is after he put the staples in it, he took his two fingers and just packed it down as hard as he would go. And so it made it home. We knew it probably would, but again, our mm -hmm. building had to do test sections overnight to make sure it would come home all right. And it did. And mm -hmm. I, met, I had a chance to meet him. That was wonderful in our building because they do a presentation with their missions and then they always come to our building and shake our hands and thank us for bringing them home so i was lucky enough to meet a number of astronauts and danny olivas was one of them that i really wanted to meet and i had a chance to meet john glenn too so well I was really lucky. well you want to own this book uh, get it for your kids uh, i have for my grandchildren uh would you believe today uh our uh, anita truex uh, come in i came in a little bit late about 11 o'clock and she said, uh, Don Thomas come in the museum this morning. Astronaut Don Thomas, and he wanted to come in when yeah. it was quiet and look around. He mm -hmm. talked to a group of uh, Japanese Florida kids uh, oh, a week ago. Nice. And Don Thomas uh, won a 24 Ohio Knots. Yes. And he comments on the book here. He, he was my very first review that he wrote. Well, he said, quote, I safely completed four space shuttle missions due in no small part to the precise work of the So Sisters. Everyone who reads this story will be inspired by Jean Wright, who followed her dreams to become a critical member of the space shuttle team. Oh, Steve, that's and, nice. uh, and he's uh, wrote a book, Orbit of Discovery, mm -hmm. on there. And uh, uh, I think that says it all there. You've got uh, several people, Michael Nicole Leinbach. Michael Scott, Michael Leinbach, uh, Jonathan uh, Ford. A astronaut Barbara Morgan. Oh, my says, favorite. My I favorite. love this book, Stitches May Be Small, but the contributions of Jean Wright and her fellow So Sisters were huge. They kept us astronauts safe and confident. What a, what a way to, to say that. So well, for those who are uh, familiar, Barbara Morgan was the first runner up to Kristen McAuliffe. And Barbara actually went to become a full on fledged astronaut. But uh, I've been friends with her now for 11 years. And I have pictures of my granddaughters as they're growing up with her. She's a very sweet lady, a very sweet. She lady. is. Well, hope you've all enjoyed this. Just a couple postcard pictures here. Uh, Ken sent me a bunch of pictures, but uh, you can see them on your Facebook there. But we wanted to just oh, we missed this awful. man, Mr. Hugh Harris, Harris. the voice of yeah. NASA at our shuttle fest a year ago. Uh, what was it? What's the oh, you got a picture there of some so that in the TPS in there? Yes, but, uh, yes. Oh, Hugh's such a gentleman. You know what? Before he did our introductions at the first shuttle fest. The man is so busy and I was honored. I still have him on my voicemail. Uh, he did my history and, and literally went over point by point by point 
because he said, I wanted to make sure my introduction for you was perfect. And uh -oh. I'm thinking, how can you beat that? Yeah, he, <laughs> he, uh, that? Uh, he was our master of ceremonies at our first mm -hmm. shuttle fest. Uh, we've got uh, astronaut wrangler Nick Thomas is doing those duties now. Thank you, Nick, for doing that. But uh, we celebrated his 90th birthday here in the studio. And when he blew out the candles, I said, uh, I know you made a, a, a wish, uh, Hugh. What, what was it? And this sweet man looked at me and he said, Mark, I wish that I could be around for your 90th birthday. Oh, how sweet. How does what, what, a, what a thing to say. I mean, really, just the uh, only time I've ever heard someone say that. But, uh, well, here's a vacation picture there. Oh. of a, a place of great <laughs> repute, Grand... Uh, That's the Grand, the Grand Turk. Turk Islands. And What's the significance of this? Because John Glenn did his splash down near there. So there's an actual exhibit that they have of him. And that's also where Ken proposed to me at. Oh, so <laughs> we were on a cruise there. That in there. Very yes. good job, Bear. Looks like a pretty good good uh, piece of rock there on your finger there. Okay. I see there. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he did good. He's he did yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. And then this is one of my favorite pictures of all you sent me there. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. I can appreciate that. Uh, Ken is, is uh, on the, the news channels quite a bit, particularly Channel 9, doing mm -hmm. fabulous updates of the, the situation at Kennedy Space Center. Uh, uh, they uh, You help them too much because their reporters don't have to go out there they like did a, you do. They, they did a but, show uh, with us. Those of you local, uh, we all flip around to certain channels and, mm -hmm. and usually land on one or two there. But this is one of the older Florida channels, isn't it? And yeah. In here, uh, uh, War Warburth is is the Greg Warmoth. Yeah. Warmoth, yeah, Warmoth. yeah. Uh, his his uh, his son is a uh, a reporter uh, now a reporter too. now too on there. So well, I could uh, just say, so we were there to do his Sunday show, Central, Central Florida, Florida Spotlight. Spotlight. Okay. okay, okay, and it was with Gene and me. And you know what? It turned out to be the record-breaking audience. They showed it twice. Okay, they for that showed show. They showed it on uh, December 17th. Oh, that's awesome. And on uh, December 31. And that was really? a record breaker. Mm -hmm. All well, about space. I'm pretty sure you're our record breaker. After I for fell on the set. <laughs> After I fell Did on you? The set. I had a tray of cookies and I wasn't looking where I was going and I stepped down and they were all worried about me and I oh, go, I'm that's just mortified. Why. She I'm just brought mortified. Her famous cookies I'm mortified that I fell. And the whole staff <laughs> called up the staff called up everybody they knew to watch it there. But uh, well uh, good. Well I'm glad. Gene, we've certainly enjoyed having you here and we're so proud. Uh, of you uh, with this book and and at least two. I at mean the, the illustrations of this is just uh, is. this is, is uh, it's, it's flabbergasting to me. Oh, we we have we have we have we have kids books in here a lot, uh, but just uh, uh, once again I'll show this back page. Just just this kind of beautiful uh, work that 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 frames this whole story mm -hmm. of Gene and it is a very unique story. Okay. Mm -hmm in there and and you certainly do give your there's let a, me just show there. my favorite picture so, if i could please do let yeah me, i'll we'll be quick i'll that. be quick it's all right uh, uh marty we had I mark ustiak watching steve jokums he runs the uh lake county spaceport up oh, there on lake michigan uh does decals so we need to buy That's right, you to put up to put on this uh <laughs> shuttle there dave stangy's watching of course doug forrest has oh, been this, watching oh, the go. uh endeavor be put go. up there this right. is my favorite one of the book because she has me standing right there yeah, and I'm in the OPF and that's me looking in wonder of the book. And I think that's one of my favorite drawings uh, that she did in the book. So uh, well, very good job. We're sure that there's more awards Thanks. to be made on this. Uh, Carlton Bailey uh, is watching there. Thank you, CB. Gary Jarrell, happy birthday to you yesterday. And Tom Celentano is a big fan up in... Uh, Hartford, Connecticut area, and oh, there's your Kaplan sewing machine people there. So tell your friends to watch this repeat show on, on YouTube. We're approaching 3,000 followers on YouTube, and we had Good. about 500 uh, about a year and a half ago, thanks to your involvement on Stay Curious. So hope that you all enjoyed this. Gene, any parting questions that I didn't ask you? or No, anything? no. I, I just, I guess the only thing I want to say is, is, um, I don't know. It was an honor, and it was something I always wanted to do from the time I was a little kid. And I guess what I want to say is to people is, um, I didn't graduate from college, and and I didn't. But I just want kids to know that if you're good in art, sewing, if you have a special God-given talent that you have, 
NASA needs everybody, uh, scientists, engineers, important, but we need people who have love in their hands like we did on the shuttle. And I just want to encourage, if you have a dream, to dream big, there and it'll go. happen if you work hard. That's all. Dream on your fingertips there. Yes. <laughs> well, let me ask you this question. Uh, what kind of food do you think we can? We need to take, go to Mars? Are you curious about how we're going to feed people on Mars? Well, they did make cookies on Mars. They did make cookies. We need your cookies. Well, I'm <laughs> gonna, nice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Gary Studi that tomorrow. Gary's our guest. Gary's one of the world experts in food, right here on the Space Coast. Mm -hmm. A friend of our museum and our executive director, Karen Conklin. We're looking forward to Gary Studi in a repeat performance here on Stay Curious, where we're gonna talk about the seriousness of how you're gonna feed people for two years going to Mars and back. All those growing uh, of plants, uh, I yes. mean, uh, those potatoes get old, you know, if you saw the movie <laughs> The Martian on there. Uh, but it's a serious thing. And uh, so I feel like this historic flight of the Starship is just the beginning of putting food factories in space because we need big mm -hmm. boosting rockets to put up what we need to mm -hmm. grow for people to go to mars we can get three days of food to the moon mm -hmm. you know in, in in an emergency but it's but this mars thing you're a space person uh we uh so's ken kramer here your partner and we all know that this is very very hard going to mars it's why we haven't gone back to the moon in 50 Five years, folks, or 52 years. Yeah, because you're right. We're talking six to nine months there, depending on how close Mars is to Earth. Six to nine months there, maybe a year on the planet, six to nine months back. We're talking three years, a long time to be gone. That's right. So we'll talk about that with Gary Studi tomorrow. Once again, we love you. We love what you all do. Thanks. You and Ken to promote uh, space tourism, space excitement out there in the Netherlands where we're so lucky to be here on yes. the Space Coast and and another rock noisy rocket going off at 705 today okay so uh, your dogs will be barking and the neighbors will be <laughs> and standing out in their yard going Carl to, Arms. that's right that's right so <laughs> so uh, one more comment Marty hope it's a good one it was a comment from uh, Carlton Bailey uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> SCS 117 was where the infamous Godzilla picture was taken. Oh, he would know. He, he would, would know. know. <laughs> yeah. Glad that we know that. Godzilla picture. All right. Uh, and so uh, that is an inside joke to these photographers. Didn't brag about Gene's photography out there. Ken oh, also <laughs> is out there photographing on well, the base. he's happy uh, the, they got the an Oscar, that his Godzilla got an Oscar. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So thank you, everybody, for enjoying Stay Curious. Please tell your friends. We think it's the only place where you can get interviews with space workers like Gene Wright and have space history, astronaut birthdays, and occasionally backyard astronomy. So until tomorrow, when we can't wait to talk to Gary Studi about what kind of food we're going to eat on Mars, I'm Mark Marquette saying, I can't wait to see you in our museum to bridge, bridge the, the space, space between, between us. us. Thank you so much, Jane. Thanks. Thank and you. She's available for talk.